Actually, can these archers also fire into them there? That'd be nice. All right, welcome back to the war. And as you can see, things have taken a bit of a turn, or maybe a sense of deja vu, I guess, uh, you could have since we're defending Guinard again from Rohan. And when I think I last left you guys, basically we had just defeated the Ents at Isengard, and I believe... I think it's only been a couple of turns since then, actually. But anyway, Rohan decided to turn around and besiege Ginar. They finally made up their minds. And of course, it was just when I had sent away like another Reaver unit. So the Hornburg is better defended than ever. But uh, Ginar is now like short a unit or two. I really wish I had the Long Spears now that this battle's going on. But oh well, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, let's see, is there anything else to discuss on the campaign map? I guess um, I should say I have sort of decided to hold on to Balorn, at least for now. Um, Saruman needed to stay behind just to keep up public order. So I sent Tarzol, and his and he's actually now in command of the army, to basically go and hunt down some Gondorians that were still in the area. And I think he's chased them all out at this point. Now, if you're wondering who the heck is Tarzol, well, he was the captain that was appointed when uh, Saruman you know, left the army. And he got a Man of the Hour mechanic after defeating a very small Gondorian force, so he became a general, and so now Tarzol is in command of the army here. Uh, I think I am going to enact the plan that I mentioned last time, where I'm going to leave stout garrisons here at these two forts. Well, I say stout. Four units each. And then I'm just going to take the rest of the troops, and I'll either probably dump some of them here, maybe some of them at Balorn, or maybe even disband a couple of the smaller ones, just so they don't cost us much in the way of money anymore. And Tarzel can wander around here and place watchtowers, since this is quite a wide area that we don't have a really good view over. And eventually Saruman should be able to leave. I think, I think he's close to being able to leave already, so that should happen soon as well. But anyway, that should be it for the campaign map. It was so short, I just felt we didn't need to explain it after the battle. So let's just get right into the battle. Uh, mostly cavalry. There's a couple of units here. Peasant Militia and the Aeorling Spearmen. A Aeo Aeorling Spearmen? Yeah, I think that's how it would be pronounced. And then we have a couple more cavalry units. Peasant Scouts and a, some Peasant Militia here. So, yeah. We are outnumbered and slightly outpowered, I think. Which is very unfortunate. But, anyway, let's just get right into the battle. All right, welcome to the battle. Now, I actually forgot about something. Because they only have two infantry units, they actually couldn't use their third piece, or actually two pieces, I guess, of their siege equipment. So they've actually got one battering ram and one siege tower here. I assume the other battering ram and the other the set of ladders, I should say, are somewhere back here, and I just don't know where. But anyway... Um, facing the peasant militia are going to be our raiders, and I think they should be able to take them out without too much issue. Now, facing the vast majority of the enemy as they come pouring through here is going to be the clan spearmen, who are in their skill from formation, along with the two orcmen units, along with Ugluk and his bodyguard as well. Now, the reason I have them kind of arranged like this is because... As they pour in here, I want this archer unit to be able to fire at them as they kind of bunch up here, and the same with this archer unit that is over here. Now, these reavers are just here to make sure that we basically, uh, you know, if they start pouring up over here, the reavers can intercept any cavalry that come after them. Then we have the other reaver unit just behind the main force over here, ready to assist as needed. Okay, you guys can actually fire elsewhere now. Why don't you fire at those archers? Just because I don't think they're going to do a whole lot of damage against the Spearmen now in their current position. All the towers are firing, of course. See, I assume... Okay, yes, you're firing as well. 
assume this one is not. Okay, I didn't think so. Now, they should be through the gate here in a moment. Ow. <laughs> they are returning fire. I'm guessing that's why we occasionally lose a raider. I guess it's possible that it's our own towers hitting our guys. I hadn't considered that, but that's a possibility, too. In fact, I wonder if I should have had them arranged in such a way that they would go between us, but I didn't think of that. Yeah, that unit's decently damaged. Why don't you shoot at this other unit? Oh, actually, fire at the skirmishers, because I think they're the javelin throwers. I'm pretty sure they can do a fair amount of damage at close range. Peasants, peasants, peasants. Oh, wait, are you peasants? I guess you look like peasants. <laughs> that might be perceived as an insult, but um, it's just the facts. It's just the facts. All right now, we got to wait for them to bunch up here. I assume they'll be attacking us here soon. Also, having them a little further away from the gate, I'm hoping the towers will be able to fire into them as well. Yep, get caught, get caught. Good, good, very good. All right, archers. Why don't you start firing here, and you guys start firing here as well. Ooh, the Reavers, I think, are going to take a fair amount of damage. You guys, fire here now instead. You see, you can see the javelins, like, flying out of here. Actually, can these archers also fire into them there? That'd be nice. Oh, only half the enemy force remains. That's great. Oh, I forgot about the reinforcements. They do have those. Um, oh! Okay, they're marching over here. Okay. I, I thought maybe that's where the extra, like, or the remaining siege equipment might be. But no, 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 no. That's not what is happening here. Okay, can you guys... Okay, you guys are firing there. Okay, very nice. Okay, fire at these guys here. All right, you know what? Let's just commit the Reavers over here. Oh, dear. Oh, wait, those guys are routing. That's fine. You may route. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. Oh, getting in amongst the archers here now. Oh, okay. Actually, stop. You guys also stop. Oh, and... Okay, go ahead and kill those guys there. But then I want you to turn around and get back over here. Reavers, get back over here. Um, let's see, let's get Ugluck and his bodyguard arranged over here. There's still enough of them that they could easily um, stop routing and get back over here. We don't want to get caught fighting them out in the middle of there. So, let's see. Let's get the orc men back over here as well. I think they're still in there somewhere. Yeah, there they are over there. Okay, and the raiders have driven the peasant militia here into retreat as well. All right, now here comes the reinforcements. Ah, uh, look at the slaughter. Look at the great slaughter of all of Rohan's cavalry. Um, it looks like they're actually not returning either. Oh, they are truly routing off the battlefield. Um, I guess we'll leave the raiders up there for now. Just because I don't know if this tower will stop firing if we take them off, so we might as well just keep them there for now. 
I basically kind of wait for the same thing to happen. Where basically we just wait for them to bunch up. And then we'll start having our archers fire at them again. Because, I mean, most of these casualties, I think, were but done by the archers, simply because I think the battle, the melee fighting occurred mostly back here, so a lot of these casualties are almost certainly the archers. Oh, wow, really, no one is going to return from the main force. They, they're just all going to route off the battlefield. Okay, well, fine, fine. Come on. Right here. Oh, <laughs> that guy just got taken out. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, and these towers are firing behind too. I don't know if I already mentioned that. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if they're going to be bunched up enough that we can actually have the archers fire at them. <laughs> Because, I mean, that's most of the reinforcements there. There's going to be another peasant militia unit, but... Oh, well, you know what? Actually, I think we can fire at these guys back here. Especially since they're routing. <laughs> okay, you guys can stop firing now. All right, let's get the workmen back in position again. Make sure Ugluck's bodyguard is arranged somewhat properly. Yep, there's only five of those guys left. All right, so now this brings us to the, let's see, two peasant militia units, I think? Yes, indeed. I somehow don't think they are going to last very long. Look at how much damage the towers are just doing on their own. Oh, hey, the unit came back. Or one of the units came back. I'm not sure if that's from the reinforcements or if that was from the, uh, the other main force, and they're just taking their sweet time to come back. But both enemy generals are dead, so that's great. Come right back in. And be slaughtered anew. And away they go. <laughs> okay, stay where you are. Don't move. Just uh, let the peasant militia come to us. In fact, I might as well use up another one of those. All right, archers, fire on them. I mean, they're already wavering, so I imagine a bit of arrow fire will make them retreat quite quickly. Well, there goes a bunch of them already. The enemy force I guess it says they're routing. They're certainly taking their time doing it. All right, well, I guess I'm just going to put these guys in guard mode and tell them to fire at will just so that they can shoot at whoever they can. Admittedly, I don't think that's really going to be anyone times like these that I wish I had some cavalry. I guess uh, for now we'll just uh, fire at the peasants as they flee. Let's, uh, let's watch the poor fools. And then uh, once they're out of range of the towers, uh, we'll just call it there. Well, out of range of the towers and our own archers, of course. Oh no, no, guys! I don't know if turning around there was a good idea. You're actually coming closer <laughs> to where the arrows are coming from rather than further away. She probably just kept running in that direction. 
Oh, are they running back? Oh, wait, what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> At first, I thought they were running back the direction they had come in, and they were going to run around the settlement to, like, leave the battlefield or something, but, um... No, no, no. Clearly, panic is setting in amongst their ranks. Uh, otherwise, uh, they wouldn't be doing this. You know, running back and forth in front of the towers that are killing them. It is decidedly unwise. All right. Well, I think uh, I think you guys get the idea. They'll be out of range here soon enough, so I'll just let you guys go now, and I will bring you back uh, once we're at the end of battle screen. All right. Well, I think this second siege of Guinard definitely went better than the first because they didn't have like a couple of raider units just sitting there getting slaughtered. <laughs> uh, you may recall that's kind of what happened last time. Victory was utter and complete. Ugluck slaughtered the enemy. Reavers did hardly anything, but that's that was kind of the point. They were kind of sitting back, not doing much, waiting to be committed for most much of the battle. Even these really tiny Orcmen units, like remember, these guys only had like less than 20 guys, I want to say, in this unit, and less than like 30 in this unit. But they still managed to kill quite a few. And remember, this this is medieval too, so. These aren't routers. These are guys actually killed, because otherwise they would have been prisoners caught. So, dang, those guys did an immense amount of damage. Very nice. The raiders did very nice, killing the peasant militia as they tried to come up that siege tower. And spearmen even did well. And the Urukai archers absolutely obliterated. <laughs> and the clan spearmen actually did very well, too, actually. I mean, I already pointed out that they did, but... They did very, very well. Like, very, very well sitting there in their Skilthrum formation, just stabbing everyone to death. Granted, they took the most casualties. Oh, actually, no. Ow. We lost a lot of archers, actually, from that unit. I'm guessing... Oh, gosh, I don't actually know for sure which unit it was. Maybe I bet you it was this unit on the wall here, because I think they were being shot for a bit. I could be wrong about that. So I don't know, even this unit still took, managed to take some damage. Eh, oh well. The point is, is that they absolutely slaughtered the enemy, which is what we wanted. Alright, but let's take this back to the campaign map. Yeah, no thanks, we're not letting you guys get away. Alright, so here we are back on the campaign map. The Rohirrim driven into retreat again. Again, I want to say their forces are actually somewhat still substantial. I mean, badly depleted from what they were a moment ago, of course, but hardly a destroyed force. They still have, let's see, there's six units there, and then there's another six units there. That's 12 units, which, I mean, many of them are, are depleted, I'm sure, but that's not nothing. I mean, even if I had cavalry, to be honest, the only ones I'd be able to chase down would be the infantry anyways. The cavalry would all get away easily. I am sort of tempted now, though, to... You know, now that, that the Hornburg has, like, its own troops, really, uh, that I should bring some of these troops to Guinard. All right, well, anyway, I'll consider it. And I guess we already talked about what was happening here on the campaign map, but... Ah! It has come around to Gondor's turn again! Um, I guess those guys managed to sneak around us. That's very unfortunate. I mean, we can we can get there and intercept them, for sure. Because um, they would have to besiege it for at least a turn. Unless, unless they have siege equipment. Um, I could bring the spy over here just to confirm that. Uh, look at all these troops, though. Eesh. You know, my whole plan of having, like, like stout garrisons here actually seems like a bad idea now. Because, <laughs> like, oh, you know, Gondor would have to commit, you know, a fair number of troops here if they wanted to actually get rid of us. And it's like, well, they've decided to do exactly that. And also managed to sneak around uh, out of view of my spies and my armies to get to Balorn. 
So now I feel I have to turn around and smite this force. Uh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Well, anyway. Um, we'll be seeing some battles in the future here, so you'll see what the decisions are. Because even I do not know what the decisions are yet. So I will let you guys go, and I will bring you back as the war continues. All right, welcome back to the war. Now, there isn't really much of anything to discuss over here. I think I've adjusted the garrisons at Ginnard and the Hornburg, but I don't remember exactly what I did. So I guess here's what the Hornburg's garrison looks like. Here's what Ginnard looks like. Um, both are sturdy enough, I think, to prevent any further attacks from Rohan, or at least, I guess, in the immediate future. Uh, Lurtz's army is only a few turns, maybe two or three, I think, away from being ready to set out. And I think I'll probably have them set out even if Saruman's army... Well, I guess now it's Tarzel's army. <laughs> if uh, Tarzel's army is still out and about. Um, I'll just have to go into debt for a bit, because I... Uh, things keep happening on the campaign map to stop me from advancing, and it's really starting to annoy me that I'm not, like, conquering more settlements. And in, in particular, I feel like I should be able to destroy Rohan at this point if I could just focus on them. But of course, Gondor's not really letting me do that. Uh, speaking of Gondor, they're going to take Gind. Um, I've actually removed the goblin infantry garrison that was there and sent them to this fort, along with one of the Reaver units from Durwath. Um, that unit's going to be replaced with archers, so we'll still have all free upkeep units here. Uh, but basically, I... They're not, they weren't going to be able to hold it against the enemy, so I just thought it'd be pointless to try and hold it against them. So I just cranked up the, the tax rate as high as it could go, and uh, it's going to be taken by Gondor next turn. We'll have to take it back, probably with Tarzel's force. Now, speaking of Tarzel's force, I did decide to actually come over here and basically take the whole army over here to relieve the... Uh, the siege here at Balorn. Saruman did snatch some mercenary units uh, before the siege commenced, so he does have a bit of a garrison there, but it's not enough to hold back the units that they had. I did have a spy over here, and they did have some decent units, whereas the Corsairs are basically crap. Now, I did consider spreading out my units a bit, like having some come back over here, having some try and intercept this force under Captain Faramir, but I realized dividing up my forces like that, they were just going to get crushed, <laughs> I guess, bit by bit. Like, if I sent a small force over here, it's possible Gondor would have just abandoned the siege and destroyed them. Um, if I had tried to attack Captain Faramir while he was over here, then this force could come over here and attack whatever small force I had sent after them. It just seemed like a bad idea. So, Tarzel is going to relieve the siege, and then... Hopefully by that point, Saruman can actually leave. And so then we'll take as many troops as we can, come over here and destroy this force, which is not as great as I had worried. Because, like, they do have nine or ten units. But um, many of them are badly depleted, as you can see. Only 34 men there, only 11 there, only 16 there. So we should be able to sweep that force aside, too. And then Tarzel will come back over here to Gind to take it back from Captain Faramir. At that point, he'll then turn around and come back to the gap here and try and enact the plan that I keep telling you guys about, where we basically try and close off this area here by occupying these two forts, and probably this one as well. And uh, while all that is going on, I'm sure Lurtz will be over here attacking Rohan, because again, I'm, I'm not going to wait until the end of that plan, even though it'll probably put us pretty severely into debt. Or even if it doesn't, I guess we'll be making practically no money at that point. So, anyway, for now, we'll have what I hope is a short battle here to just relieve the siege. Allow this army to be controlled by the AI. Command this army in battle. You see, the Corsairs were never going to be able to defeat those guys. Not at all. Okay, I don't know why there's two check marks though. I don't want the army to be controlled by the AI. Oh, command the army in battle. Oh, I don't remember that ever being a feature in Medieval 2 where...
Because if I uncheck this, I can't command the army in battle. So I'm guessing this allows them to still come onto the battlefield, but this checkbox allows me to still control them. Or we could do a night attack. And that would just prevent them from coming onto the battlefield at all. And you know what? To be honest, we don't even need them anyways. Okay, so. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, attack then. All right, welcome to the battle. The enemy is surging forward, as you can see. Um, in fact, do not fire it well, just fire straight at them. I basically have my archer unit sitting out in front in loose formation so that they can fire at the archers, who are nicely bunching up just as we start shooting at them, so that's nice. Though I think they're now going to go into loose formation. Basically, it's the archers in front, some of the weaker infantry units, plus the general's bodyguard and the cell swords. And we have a long line of Uruk raiders with the reavers on each flank. Oh, and the cavalry are back here. Um, I think we can actually go ahead and send them to the flank there. Right, they are now returning fire against our archers. They're managing to hit uh, both of these guys, both units. All right, well, while this skirmish is going on there, oh, they're actually deliberately targeting the orc hunters, and that would be why. Okay, what I'm going to try and do here, then, is bring the cavalry over to the flank over there. Honestly, uh, their archers are probably better than ours, because they do seem to be killing us, so go ahead and stop firing. Cavalry charge in there. They better have stopped firing because I told them to stop firing multiple times now. Okay, now you guys can fire at will again. Um, I told you guys to run. You guys retreat, basically since the enemy is charging us anyways. And what I think I will do is I will send my cavalry back over to that flank again. For the white hand. Heavy infantry. Okay, now you guys, go for the archers again. Alright, so now we can have some of these raider units get on the flanks over here to get ready to go around the back here. And let them have it. Uh, we might lose a bunch of our cavalry, to be honest. Hmm. In fact, um, apparently the missile cavalry are actually going to do very well, so <laughs> let's send a unit over there to intercept them. Let's get the cell swords here to charge forward and engage these guys to get them to stop moving. 
uh, no, no, no. I told you guys to go around. Okay, and just like that, they're routing. All right, so get back over here now. Um, I guess we'll let the cavalry just chase them for now. Okay, you guys attack... You guys, uh, why don't you attack the Gondor Militia, actually? Well, actually, these guys are taking a lot of casualties. Get in there and attack the Anfalas Pikemen. Since they're almost certainly the ones causing that. Oh, and just like that, the battle is over. You guys, go get them, go get them. Oh, these guys have started fighting to the death, so let's pull out the swords there. Let's actually pull out these guys as well. I'd rather they just try and rout. Well, I guess it looks like we won't be able to get them to do that, so... <laughs> just kind of is what it is, I suppose. Wargs, get over here and kill them. Horsemen, kill these guys. Actually, you know what? The clan spearmen are probably decently quick unit. Why don't we go ahead and have them attack as well? Oh. <laughs> these guys are now heading towards the raiders, so I guess we might as well tell them to attack as well. Alright, anyone else? No, I think that's it. Oh, they're fighting to the death, but we should be able to take them out pretty easily. Alright, that takes care of them, and... Ah, there is one guy left. I don't think the Urukai. Oh wait. Oh no 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 that that's part of the uh, the Urukai unit. <laughs> I I thought that was more Gondorians down there because their armor was so shiny. Like we don't have shiny armor. And I guess it's not really shiny. It's more uh, it's been painted white. All right, there we go. Um, that's actually not very good, but I think it's mostly amongst the units that I didn't care very much about anyways. Like the Orc Hunters, the Orc Fighters, Clan Spearmen. Like, I did deliberately put them in the front so that they would take most of the casualties, so. Yes, we took more than, than I expected, but at the same time, um, uh, the, the one, the units that we, that took the casualties were the ones that I expected. So, let's take this back to the campaign map. Yeah, look at all those captured guys. You guys are going nowhere. I don't even want the money. <laughs> all right, but anyway, um, let's see you guys. Oh, right, right. We need to decide who's staying and who's going. And then, like I said, I already explained the plan. Going for these guys, then going to retake Gind and then trying to, like, establish some kind of defense here. And then Lurtz should be attacking Rohan soon. So, um, looks like that's going to be it for now, so I will let you guys go, and I will bring you back as the war continues. <laughs>